This is a quick demonstration of making a shell core. This is the core we're going to make. It's made out of a sand that is pre-coated with a resin. When you heat the sand, the resin first melts and then cures to form uh, a solid core by binding the sand together. It's an excellent sort of core because it's very strong, stores well, won't draw the damp. It's hollow, so it vents easily. Um, and it actually, when the molten metal goes right around it, it destroys the binder in the sand, so the breakdown of the core is very good. The sand up front just looks like this. It just looks like a dry sand, but it is in fact resin coated. The only drawback to the process is that you have to have hot moulds to do it in, and that means the moulds have got to be metal. In this case, they're aluminium. These are the two mould halves. They've been cleaned and just lightly coated with a bit of graphite. The first thing we have to do is get these two hot. They have to get up to around about 180 centigrade. Now, I have here a couple of electrically heating, heated plates, um, which I hold onto the um, hold against the mould with a just with a crudely with a G clamp. Uh, and this is shell core making at a pretty basic sort of level. Many people would use gas torches instead of the electrically heating uh, uh, patterns, but uh, I find them a bit more convenient. Now all we have to do is wait till it all gets hot, and then we'll come back and actually make a core. All right, the die should be hot enough now. Certainly seems like it. So we'll give it a go. Get these wretched gloves on. <coughs> this is the resin coated sand. I simply fill the mould, start the timer off, which is set for two and a half minutes. Wait until 15 seconds have passed. Nearly there. That looks about it. Then tip. Hold upside down and most of the sand will fall out, leaving just a thin shell. Now we wait for the two and a half minutes. Right, that's getting close to our two and a half minutes. box a little tap until it separates. And there we have it, one nice thin shell core. This is a slightly more sophisticated way of making the cores. I'm still using the same two electrically heating plates either side of the die and they're insulated from this crude machine with just a couple of bits of uh, AC sheet. I've just replaced the clumsiness of the G clamp with uh, a, an over centre type uh, clamp and uh, mounted half of the die on a couple of little wheels here and in here so that it all just rattles backwards and forwards. The quick tap and the, the cores come loose. Get rid of any loose sand flying around. Tap it so it helps settle the sand in probably. Start a timer off now. For two and a half minutes total. Uh, and after the first 15 seconds, we'll tip out the bulk of the sand. That's about it. And now we have the typical shell core. Not only does this save material, of course, but it produces a core that vents well because of the central hole. Uh, it 
cooks off quicker in the dyes if you were to make it solid it would take 15 or 20 minutes for the heat to soak right through to the center of the core um, and in addition being that thin it breaks down much quicker than the casting and falls away because the, the heat of the casting will destroy the bond in the core for about mm, maybe two three mil of the thickness of the core and the cores aren't much thicker than that so they just about fall out of the casting quite well now it's just a matter of waiting until the, the two and a half minutes uh, are completely up to cure the core uh, and then remove it again. It's much quicker and easier like this than, than with the, the clumsy G clamp, but sometimes you do it that way because you only need a few. Here I use a lot of these two sizes, so it, it pays to put it in this little machine and, and um, uh, it's much easier and uh, physically less demanding. Which is a good thing at my age, I can tell you. Actually, I remember Volkswagen making um, cylinder head cores, I think they were, uh, back in the 1960s, using a machine very, very similar to this, except that uh, instead of heating the die with electrical plates like these, they had a gas flame sitting underneath that kept the cast iron die, that one uh, was hot. Right, that's close enough, I think, to the two minutes. There, the two come loose. Out. 